Hi everyone, I'm Jerry Lee from IntelliCAD Tuition School. I'm a director and English tutor here at the center. And today I'm here with Mr. Jimmy Ling, our maths tutor and also a director at IntelliCAD Tuition School. Hello everyone, my name is Jimmy and I've been teaching mathematics for more than 10 years and I specialize in uh, teaching mathematics here. So Jimmy, from your years of experience, what problems do students normally face when it comes to primary school mathematics? Well, I would say that it's uh, problem sums. Most students are very weak in problem sums. So what's so problematic about problem sums? Actually, this is a very common problem that I've heard every time I answer phone calls from parents. They will always tell me that their child is very weak in problem sums. So uh, Jimmy, could you elaborate more on uh, what are the main problems that students face when doing section C of their math paper? Well, uh, first of all, most students have a problem understanding the problem sums. When they read the questions, they don't understand what is the question asking. That's the first problem. And the second problem is when students understand the problems, they have difficulty knowing what method to apply to solve the problems. So when you say they have difficulty knowing what methods to apply, uh, is it they do not know how to draw models, uh, they have weak analysis skills, they do not know how to make use of the information presented towards them in the presented to them in the passage? I will say that uh, problem sums can be classified into uh, different types of problem sums. I found that each type of problem sum right, have a unique teaching have a unique method to solve the problem. So if a student is able to identify the correct method to solve the problem, he will be able to solve it correctly. And also, would you say that once the student knows how to use the method appropriately, uh, he, will, he will see a boost in his marks? Uh, not really. Other than knowing the correct method to apply, the student must also know how to apply correctly, as well as uh, making sure that he doesn't have any careless mistake. Because uh, when students get case mistake in the plus and minus, etc., you result in uh, losing a lot of marks. So not only must you know the correct method to apply, you must also apply the method correctly. Yes. Am I right? Yes, yes. And also uh, prevent careless mistake. So how to prevent careless mistake? I will teach my students how to use uh, methods to check their answers, to make sure that, that their, their answers are correct in the exams. So Jimmy, I was just flipping through some of your worksheets and some of the past year papers. And I realize I take about 10 to 20 minutes to figure out each problem sum. Are problem sums getting harder because, because I don't recall math being so difficult when I was in primary six? Yes, definitely. Problem sums are definitely getting harder and harder. In fact, how do you study for your PSLE? For me, I was just uh, flipping through files and pretending to study most of the time. I also can't recall from my, that was uh, many, many years ago. but. But I will really say that problem sums are, are really very, very hard now and students have to put in uh, more hard work now to so score well for their problem sums. You know, my friend was showing me this news article about tuition centers tutoring parents so that the parents can use that knowledge to tutor their child. So that shows how difficult problem sums have become. So another problem that I realized, another trend that I realized that Many parents, they approach, our, they, they approach us, they come to our centre and they will start saying, uh, telling me about how their kids, their children used to do uh, well in primary four. Say, they will come and come to me and say, oh Jerry, you know my kids were scoring A star in primary two, they were scoring A in primary four, but when, when it comes to P5 and P6, they are, they are suddenly failing everything. I will say that the jump in difficulty is the highest from P4 to P5. Uh, so don't be uh, alarmed if your child didn't do well. I mean, I mean you should be alarmed, but don't be overly alarmed <laughs> because uh, it's quite, it's quite uh, normal. The next question on most parents' minds, I'm sure most parents are thinking of this question as well. How can I, as a parent, help my child do better for his or her primary school mathematics exam? Well, assuming that the parent knows how to do the problem sum himself, uh, he can explain the problem sums in a more visual ways, like using uh, pictures and models, and this will be much better than much better than uh, using complicated algebra methods uh, to bring the idea across to the child. Yeah, I notice parents like to teach their child algebraic methods when 
uh, the question calls for you know using models and diagrams. So, do you have anything to say about this? Can can the parents still continue using algebraic methods to teach their child? Yes, in fact, that's a very good question. Uh, most uh, children in the primary school they do have a very strong foundations in the algebra. Right, foundation uh, algebra get built up during the secondary schools and later years. So during primary school, parents sh should not use should not use too complicated algebras and should use things like uh, models or even tables to, bet to better uh, teach the child. So a parent should refrain from using his old school algebraic methods to solve the question and instead try to use the primary school method of uh, model drawing and tables to, s to solve the question. Am I right to say that? Uh, yes, of course. And of course, uh, this, the parents must know how to draw the tables and models to explain it first. So should we open a tuition class for parents to draw models? <laughs> uh, yes, I think we should. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. Alright, now assuming I'm a parent who knows how to solve the problem sums using the model drawing method, diagram or tables, are there any revision practices or tricks or tips that I can implement to help my child do better for his exams? Well, at first, uh, it, at first, you should ask yourself, what is your child's uh, foundation in the mathematics first? And of course, uh, this can be best done by looking at the past results. Right? If your child has been doing very well in the school exam papers, uh, you, can, you, you can let your child practice the more challenging problem sums and spend uh, less, lesser time on uh, section A and B. However, if your child has been uh, barely passing or failing the school exams, you should start off by letting your child do the easier question first to let the child have uh, stronger foundations as well as uh, motivating the child to do uh, harder questions later. Will you say that uh, by doing easier questions, what other benefits will a child get by doing easier questions? Well, first of all, it helps them to strengthen their foundations before they do the harder one. And secondly, when they're able to do the easier ones, they'll be more uh, motivated because they feel that they are able to, if they're able to do the easy one, they'll be able to do the harder ones. So you give them more confidence and more motivation. For a parent whose child is just starting off in primary five, how can he or she tell that his or her child is fundamentally weak in math or he will just do fine? You can look at the child, uh, your child past year exam papers. If your child has been doing very well in a section A and B, it means that your child has uh, pretty strong foundations and so you can let your child practice more on the section C problem sums. However, if your child has uh, difficulties on uh, attempting questions in uh, section A and B, then perhaps you should let your child uh, practice the more basic question first. So you're trying to say that if the child is struggling with section A and B, he probably has some misconceptions of the mathematical concepts being taught in primary five. Am I right to say that? Yes, and uh, before that also, primary three, primary two also. Alright, so we got to monitor your child's progress way before primary 5 or so. So when you say section C, do you think all section C questions are equally difficult? And uh, I know section C is the part where they try to distinguish A from A star or B from A. What, what do you have to say about that? I mean, of course, uh, in section C, there are easy ones and there are hard ones. Uh, so don't be demoralized if you can't do the difficult ones. Just make sure you can do the easy one first. Then from there, you progress to the difficult ones. Okay, but let's say if your child is in primary 6, his exam is coming in a few weeks' time, and his math is still fundamentally weak, uh, is all hope lost for that child? Well, my advice is uh, never give up. If you give up, you will never be able to succeed. I've seen a lot of uh, last-minute miracles in my life, uh, so during these uh, few months, just make sure that your child put in the most effort, and miracles will happen also. Few weeks, not few months. <laughs> <laughs> yes, few weeks, few weeks. But uh, definitely, trust me, uh, definitely uh, results will show if your child is able to put in hard work. Before we end this session, Jimmy, do you have any tips or advice to give to our listeners, parents and students? There is no secret to doing well in mathematics. There are only four steps. The first step is to understand the problems. The second step is to identify the correct method to solve the problem. The third step is to apply the method correctly. And the last step is to check your answers. With that, 
thanks for listening in. I hope you benefited from this session with uh, Mr. Jimmy. I'm Jerry here, uh, and good luck for all those listening. Good luck for your exams. <laughs>